Hello friend, in this video we will discuss the designing of the plastic part for the manufacturability which involves which involves the many important factors like part design, tooling, material selection and the production. So uh, it is uh, very essential to build the part as per the functional need by keeping the design intent or the end use of the final product or uh, we can we can use the we can thinking that the end product how the uh, the customer are using what are the uses of the product so like that we can keep in the mind while designing the product while working on the pro, uh, working on the parts we should work on the weight reduction elimination of the fabrication of the assembly step strength of the part and uh, reducing the cost and getting the product into the market quicker so we have to work on this process first so uh, let's discuss some uh, important factor that need to be considered to meet our plastic part design goal for successful production process so our uh, first point uh, our first important uh, important factor here is a uh, uh, material consideration so uh, generally, the manufacturer select the uh, familiar grade of the plastic from similar application of the part. So we generally call it as a, a reference. So uh, from the reference or sometimes we rely on the uh, recommendation from the supplier. So some, uh, sometimes we use the uh, reference part uh, by selecting the for selecting the material or, or sometimes we will ask to the supplier also for the material selection so uh, the plastic uh, plastic selection is a very complex uh, complex task so the material selection is very complex task so it involves uh, the many factor like uh, uh, sometimes uh, we need to check the temperature chemical resistance agency approval assembly finish finishing cost and the availability so in terms of the temperature the material should withstand the thermal stresses and like that and in chemical register sometimes the effect occur when uh, the when uh, effect occur when the part in contact contact with the chemical so when any solid liquid or the gas comes in contact with the part so it must not be uh, so it must be resistance to the chemicals so and the agency approval uh, in agency approval, the material must be approved by governmental and the uh, private standard or for the uh, for its property. So, such as the heat uh, resistance, flammability, and the electric uh, electrical and the mechanical property. So, materials should pass through the government and the private laws. So, and in assembly, uh, it should allow all the assembly steps like bonding, mechanical fastening and the welding so that material uh, should uh, should uh, should allow the uh, the assembly step uh, and in terms of finishing the material should have good finishing and the appearance and in terms of cost we know that the cost is a very important factor to consider while selecting so the material should have the low cost and in terms of availability materials should be easily available so these are some these are some point we need to consider for selecting the plastic material for the part and our next factor is a radius so radius is also a very important factor because the, uh, the you, you can see that the uh, here some parts having the radius should always be consideration because the radius allows a smooth flow of material during the manufacturing of the part. Uh, if the smooth flow is there, uh, the materi uh, material will reach the corner and it will fill the complete cavity. It also, the, the round, uh, round or the radius, it also eliminate the area of highly high stresses. So it eliminate the high stresses area and, and also it will uh, uh, it, it, it will eliminate the possibility of breakage of the part. So radius must be our consideration while designing the part. So the uh, complete product must be rounded or the must, must provide the radius to the corner. Our next factor is a wall thickness. So while designing your part, uh, 
uh, design the part so that uh, we and uh, we need to design our part so that the wall thickness is consistent or uniform so we need the uniform wall thickness throughout the part so uh, why because it helps to avoid the many part defects that can occur during the manufacturing process so if your part having the variable thickness sometimes uh, somewhere is high somewhere is low uh, low thickness uh, somewhere is high somewhere is low then it will be a uh, some difficult while the stress concentration stress concentration is there some shrinkage problem is there so when plastic uh, so when plastic we need to design the plot with the uh, uniform thickness that is confirmed so when uh, plastic melt it flows the area where less resistance so during uh, during the manufacturing process when plastic is melt uh, molten plastic it flows to the area where the less resistance so if you are part having the variable thickness throughout the melting material may flow into the thick area first so but it depends on the gate location but it, it will flow on the thick area first when this occur the thin area may not fill properly so at that time thin area uh, may not fill properly and the thicker area will require uh, thicker area a uh, thicker area will cool more slowly during the cooling process so it is a risk of a uh, voids uh, voids or the shrinkage defect so when the thick area will uh, cool more slowly at that time there is a risk of voids or hole a hole in the or a cavity in the part or the shrinkage defect may occur so uh, designing your part with the rounded corner will also uh, will, will also help in the proper filling of the part during the molding process so uh, so in the wall thickness we need the uniform wall thickness that is our uh, design intent and we need to round in the all parts or the corners uh, next factor is a important factor is a gate location so the designing the gate in a such a way that the material or the resins flow properly so we need to choose the proper location of the location of the gate so in uh, why because the proper location of gate is very important because uh, it defines the complete complete filling of the cavity so the flow of resin from the gate to the runner and then distributed through the part so it defines all these things it, we need to fill the complete cavity of the mold so the gate location is very important so and the gate uh, the type of the gate and the location of the gate is very important and it will impact on the part overall quality because we need to we need to uh, we need to fill the complete cavity and we need the uniform cooling so the gate location is very important for that and it will impact on the quality of the part also and the type of gate is also very important and the next factor is the draft so we all know that in the plastic product design the draft is used for ejecting the part from the mold cavity so the the amount of the taper on the vertical wall of the part is nothing but the draft so without draft part may not eject from the mold uh, that we know or it may damage the part during the ejection generally the draft angle between 1 degree to 2 degree 1 degree to 2 degree are required but it can vary depending on the part restriction or the specification so it depends uh, it depends on the draft angle it depends on the height of the wall also uh, because sometimes the small uh, small or the shorter short height is there so at that time we will provide the more drop if the if the uh, high uh, if the high height is there or the large height is there at that time we will provide the less draft so the draft angle is very important in terms of ejecting the part from the mold so this is a very important factor why uh, need to be considered in the design process next one is the ribs our next factor is the ribs 
Suppose we design the part with the minimum wall thickness and it is not as strong as the thicker part. So we know that uh, for strength also for strength purpose we uh, we need we will increase the thickness. But uh, so but we need the minimum wall thickness. So in this case we will not increase the complete part thickness to strengthen the part. So we no need to increase the complete part thickness for strengthening the part. We will include the ribs. Okay, we will include the ribs where the sections are weak. Only where the sections are weak, we will include the ribs. So we will add the ribs for adding the strength to the part. Not overall, not we will increase the complete overall overall thickness of the part. So wherever the weak portion is there, and uh, there only we will in, uh, we will add the ribs to strengthen the part or to strengthen the section. So here we will avoid in the thicker wall thickness, thicker wall thickness or the maximum wall thickness because it will increase the overall material or the weight of the part. So uh, uh, if you are increasing the thickness, it will increase the overall thickness, overall weight of the part and the material of the um, increase the material also and adding the rib only and adding the and here we are adding the ribs only where the section is weak by keeping the minimum wall thickness so depending on the material use the rib thickness is, uh, it will vary but the rib thickness should be it is recommended that the rib thickness should be 50 to 70 percent of the thickness of the part so it will uh, for uh, avoiding the sink mark so uh, the important factor for the, as per the strengthening purpose the ribs is very important and uh, need to be considered in the in the design process or the in at the time of designing the part our next factor is a mold shrinkage so the shrinkage we know that the shrinkage that occurs during the during the plastic part molding process can be as much as 20% by the value. So uh, the crystalline and the semi-crystalline material are most prone to the thermal shrinkage and the amorphous material are known to less shrink. So the crystalline and semi-crystalline material are more prone to the thermal shrinkage and the amorphous material are known to less shrink. So amorphous material less shrink. So, how we can avoid the molding shrinkage issue? So, uh, here only the simple process is to avoid the avoid the molding shrinkage is by keeping the molding shrinkage by keeping the uh, keeping the uniform thickness uniform thickness of the part, and uh, we can uh, we can avoid the molding shrinkage issue by optimizing the processing parameters such as molding temperature, material temperature injection speed injection pressure injection time and the cooling time and in terms of part we can keep the uniform wall thickness so in that way we can avoid the molding shrinkage or the shrinkage of the part so in this way uh, we have discussed the important factor need to be considered while designing the part if you like this video you can like share and subscribe the channel and don't forget to don't forget to hit the bell icon because uh, you will get the latest video whenever we upload if you click on the bell icon so thank you for watching keep supporting and keep learning see you in the next video